Sponsored by the Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of the Bobby Bones Show. It's amazing to me you guys have been married for 35 years, still married and getting along and now making music together too. Still married and getting along? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Most of the time, anyway. We're getting along pretty good, actually. That's the, that's the key to a long-term relationship of any type or a marriage particularly, right? You've really got to get along. Obviously, with the new album out, House of Love, you guys have had singles and videos and doing a lot of uh, press on this. Well, we're trying to, uh, to get everything out as quickly as possible. You know, we're on a short rope, and before our looks go, we've got to make some hay. You know, uh, seeing the, the videos that you guys have done for this new album as well, and, uh, and they're getting a lot of great exposure. It has to be fun, you know, not only making the album, writing the songs and everything, and, and doing them as a couple, but also doing the great music videos too, right? Well, there's a lot of art direction involved in, in our uh, creation of our brand and how we want everything to look. And so, you know, we, we direct and art direct and do the, the videos ourselves. So we've got the continuity, but it's, it's a lot of fun. I do have an artsy background. I'm, I'm an artist now, um, but I also was a graphic artist and a makeup artist in Hollywood in the um, Tiger Beat era. So that was a lot of fun. Well, you know, I thought it was interesting too, Hemp, that, uh, that you guys originally met at a Cars concert. You gotta tell yeah. me how this happened. Well, the Cars was one of the biggest bands of the world at the time. They were playing the sports arena in LA and uh, both of us had a little bit of a connection to the music industry at the time. And uh, Denim was with Tiger Beat Magazine, as she mentioned, and she was with a writer that was writing a story on the band. And so they had backstage passes. In fact, the writer just said, hey, I'm, I'm gonna be doing a story on the Cars. Do you wanna go with me? So it was just one of those little things where she decided to go. And uh, so she was backstage and I was with a friend of mine and um, I don't know how we got backstage. We just talked our way and slipped in. Somehow we wound up back there. And it, because the cars were so big at the time, there was lots of people backstage. They had catering and everybody was partying and it was an amazing time. And I looked around and I saw Denim and I have to say it was lust at first sight. She just looked absolutely amazing. Of all the models, groupies, beautiful women backstage, there was something about her. There's a quality in her spirit, even though, she, I mean, she was fantastic. She was, I still remember what she was wearing. So it's one of those kinds of stories that you hear about. And, um, you know, here we are 35 years later. I think well, Kevin's so romantic, you know, he's just, uh, that's one of the things he brings to his songwriting. And I'm glad to be getting the, being the recipient of it. Well, you know, definitely, Denim, and I was going to bring up as well that, you know, with House of Love, you know, there are a lot of kind of love songs in here. Listening to the whole album, you know, musically, you can hear a nod to, uh, to past artists, definitely of the 60s and 70s, but also with your guys' harmonies together, yeah. it's kind of like there's a lot of love songs and a lot of, you know, feeling of intimacy throughout the album. Thank you. Well, thank you. I think that people appreciate that. Um, they, they appreciate being able to hear the lyrics. And we certainly do make the records with a lot of love, I'll tell you. That's what we're all about. It, we really have got nothing else um, in our purpose except to you know, be happy and bring happiness and good times. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Eric, one of the things you mentioned about our sound is that's something we discovered rather late in life. You know, we had sung before a long, long time ago, but we left, uh, we left the music business and went in a completely different direction for 30 years. And it was only after retiring and the death of both of our parents sets of parents, you know, kind of sets you adrift a little bit and you start looking in the mirror and thinking how much time do we have left? And, um, you know, we just realized that if we're gonna ever pursue our gifts or our passions, don't let it hold you back, folks, because it doesn't matter what age you are, but particularly at this age, um, if you have a chance to really pursue it. And, you know, the music is one of those things in Nashville. You've got to decide, hey, am I really going to go for it here and, and, and get good? Can, am I even competitive? Can I write songs on that level? Can I sing, perform, play the guitar, all this kind of stuff? It, 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 do you really have a shot at, at, you know, a career or being excellent on some level without even thinking about a career? 
And I entered into this without thinking about a career because I'm telling you what, you know, you don't usually start a music career in your late 60s. You know, I was going to say, you wrote songs, though, at a young age, and you were kind of part of the whole San Francisco scene and really got involved yep. with music. So truthfully for you, I feel like it was kind of a coming back home. And yeah, it's a nice really thing was. that you and Denim can share together and have the harmonies and have those voices put together. And it was, it was so redemptive because I didn't know if I could do it again. I didn't know if I had the gift, the talent, or the enthusiasm to really pursue it. Because to get good, as you know, you're a guitar player, you've really got to want it. You've got to put the time in and the effort in, the focus and all of that, writing, rehearsing, practicing, all those different things. So uh, yeah, you know, it was coming back home and it was a redemption of our life. When we started singing together, that's when the magic really happened. And we've come up with a signature sound that just sounds like us. And it's so great to be playing our own music and putting it out there and getting such a great reception. Well, you know, I've got to bring up also that uh, you've got the, the song, you know, you've got a song and the album that are Grammy nominated also, which is, you know, at this point in yeah. life, that's not a bad thing. Yeah. Well, I have to clarify, Eric, it wasn't Grammy nominated. It was submitted for a Grammy nomination. To me, that's so, close enough. <laughs> that's, that's a big deal for us, you know? Yeah. And, yeah, uh, it's amazing. I mean, just when you say the word Grammy and your music is is possibly a part of that huge deal, then I mean, was very uh, exciting. oh man. Yeah, we had a, a friend in the business that submitted our songs, and well, he was a four-time Grammy winner himself, and so he he said these songs need to be nominated. So he's the one that took the bull by the horns and entered us. We had no idea, but we were just thrilled to be uh, be part of it, and. I'll tell you what, it's nice. We've had a song on the BBC now that got picked up, that was sent out and it, people heard it and they loved it and they started to air it. It's just incredible what's happening. Well, I've got to ask you guys too. I know that, uh, you know, during this hard time during the pandemic and everything else, you guys have tried to play some shows live and obviously when you have, you sold them out. Are you, got, are you both, you know, looking at getting back on tour and doing some more shows this year, particularly with the new album? We're definitely going to do some shows this year. And we should have a calendar coming out soon. And we're also going to be doing some corporate events, which we're very excited about doing. Yeah, so that's going to be super fun. Yeah, we just got contacted by an event planner who's been looking for us for corporate events and conventions. So that's really exciting. You know, you work so long to get to a certain point and then things start to begin to happen. And then you have to throw fuel on the fire. And we're just so thrilled to have, um, you know, Jim Frazier's our producer. I mean, as a result of working with him, he changed our lives completely. He brought into existence the music that was in my head. And uh, Denim and I have been just so blessed to have him. And then our publicist is great. And um, we have a, a great social media person. And, and you know, we're, we've got a team together now trying to provide our own artist services like a, a record label, you know. Well, I want to bring up also, Denim, I want to make sure for our viewers to know about as the singles come out, I know no, more videos and everything else as well with House of Love, where do our viewers need to go for the website, for the social media and everything to keep up with you and him? Well, we can be found on Facebook, of course, the Hemp and Denim, uh, Instagram, Hemp and Denim, uh, hempanddenim.com is our website. Uh, you, can, you can buy the music there. And we're also on YouTube and all the streaming services. But the House of Love are really a uh, great album, great songs on there. It's a fun Thank listen. You. And uh, the videos, I know we're getting a lot of awareness as you brought up too, Hemp, uh, with uh, getting some playtime on the BBC. And uh, I'm sure uh, doing well in other Americana areas. I think this is going to be a great, uh, great year for Hemp and Denim. So I just want to thank you both for uh, coming on the Rock and Review and talking about the new album, House of Love. Thank you so much, Eric. It's a thrill to be on your show. Yeah, it really is, man. Thank you so much for being a friend, a fan, and for having us on your show today. It's really been a blast. Thank you. Sponsored by The Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of a Bobby Bones show.